much, Tim. Thank you. Right now, we will talk more about our main story tonight, the news that two teenagers have been arrested in connection with five acid attacks that happened overnight in London in the space of just 90 minutes. Two men on a moped threw corrosive substances into people's faces before trying to rob them. The police say one of the victims has life-changing injuries. And let's talk about how to treat those injuries, what can be done for someone in that horrendous situation. Let's talk to Dr. Asim Shamalik, who joins me from Salford. He leads a team of doctors who've travelled to Pakistan a number of times to help people who've been attacked there. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, very few people watching, I, I hope, will have any experience of this. How do you go about treating someone who's been attacked in this way? Are there similarities with someone who's been burnt in a fire, for example? What, what would you do for someone? Well, uh, there are different, first of all, thanks for having me. There are different kind of injuries, both of them. One of them is a chemical injury. The other one is, is a fire injury, which is smoke inhalation. For chemical injuries, which are these acid burn victims, unfortunately, are, uh, if, unfortunately, somebody suffers from it, they have to immediately wash the, the affected area with thoroughly with, 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 with cold water. About good 15, 20 minutes under cold water, remove all the jewelry and um, remove the clothing of the affected area. However, this is the immediate effect, but of course they have to, to go contact the, the, the emergency ambulances and, and then, then becomes uh, a long-term, if the, those particular areas have been affected, then it becomes a long-term uh, reconstruction and rehabilitation process. And it's, it's a life-changing injury these are. And you talk about reconstruction, I mean, how, how much can you do for people? What have you been able to do in the past? Um, in most of these circumstances, about good 70-75% of the patients, uh, there's not a lot to be offered. But having said that, uh, they, they can have uh, uh, skin regrafting from different areas, depending which area has been affected. And it's, it's a slow teasing process, which may take years and years to, to reconstruct the, the affected area, especially the face. And uh, the, the, I'm assuming this is unbelievably painful for someone. Does that pain ever go away? Well, the, so the pain, superficial pain does go away, but the pain of a scar for life never goes away. And they, unfortunately, then they, they never get accepted in the society as well as even by their own families. And they, they have a very, very high uh, suicidal tendencies in these uh, victims as well. They suffer from depression and all kind of other, other social economic problems as well. And, and so uh, for you, are you saying that the psychological impact could be as great as the physical impact? Absolutely, absolutely. It's devastating for them. It's, it's, they are crushing injuries for them and, and it changes their life. And uh, they, they, they even cannot uh, show their faces to an ordinary person. Half of them, uh, they, they keep it covered through a veil or through uh, their, their shades. And um, uh, as I said before, physical scars will be healed by numerous operations and reconstructive surgeries, but the psychological impact and will remain for the rest of their lives. Dr. Asim Shamalak, thank you so much for joining us there from Salford. Thank you. Thank you.